Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us here. Uh, my name is Eric. I'm on the product marketing team at Looker, and I'm joined by my good colleague, John Walls, from the UK. And today, we're going to talk about streamlining workflows and building data products. And just a very quick poll of hands. Um, how many people are on the data team at their company? Great. And how about on the product team? Awesome. And sale, or software engineers, are there any? Cool. Great. So um, uh, what I'm going to do is at first I'm going to give you um, some of the best examples we have of the most sophisticated ways that people are streamlining workflows and building data products on our, our platform. And then afterwards, I'm going to hand it off to John. He's going to show you how you can actually work towards that with some very quick, easy, early steps, uh, some things that you can go home and try right today, uh, and build that sophistication over time so that you can deliver some of these really sophisticated workflows and, and data products. So uh, before we do that, I just want to recognize the fact that there are people from all over the world at this conference today. And I really appreciate you guys taking the time to be here with us. And what we're talking about is all about growth. So it's kind of relevant to everyone in the room, no matter whether you're on the data team, product team, engineering team, or on the business side of things. Uh, it's about taking your data and transforming that into growth and whether that's internally or externally uh, for your customers. And so I'm going to cover a few different strategies for doing this. And they kind of, and, and John will show the demos of each of these three strategies as well. But to cover them very briefly, the first one is more internally facing. It's, it's taking your workflows, streamlining them, so that you have a greater return on your investment on, uh, on what your technology stack is. Uh, then uh, we're going to talk a bit about building custom data experiences in a lightweight way, and then over time, building out the sophistication and customization so that you can do more and deliver delightful experiences with data. And then uh, the final or the pinnacle of the, the idea is that you can take those products and you can externalize them and not only give them to your customers, but also monetize them and charge a premium for the service. Uh, and so we'll talk about a couple examples there. Um, and I'll go through each of these one at a time. So first. Um, you may have heard this story, but this is, this is one of my favorites. So around integrating workflows, how can you, how can you drive growth by integrating work, workflows? So FuturePlay is a customer of ours. They're in Finland. They are a gaming dev shop. And what they've done, they rely on ads to drive business growth. So think about downloading and paying for uh, games. Uh, so they do a lot of advertising on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Snapchat. Um, all, I think they've got over a dozen ad platforms. And so uh, they needed a better way to take information from all that data and optima, uh, from all those ad platforms and figure out the optimal way to advertise on each of them. And across so many platforms and with so much data, they didn't have a good solution until they started using our APIs for data. And so what they built was this completely automated uh, round trip uh, integration with their data science tools and these ad platforms. So they prepare the governed data in Looker. They pipe that into Python, uh, Jupyter Notebooks. They do their data science modeling there. And they make their predictions for lifetime value for any given customer acquired through the ads. And they compare those predictions against the actuals. Uh, and then uh, they adjust the bids on the fly automatically uh, through these, this automated process. And so. As a result, they're taking a lot of data from tons of sources and in real time updating a bunch of different ad platforms. And as a result, they were able to triple revenue and quadruple the number of downloads on their platform. So they found a way to integrate a whole bunch of different systems and use data to drive growth through internal systems. So next, productizing. Global Payments is a point of sale solution um, that has over a million merchants globally. And they have over 6 billion transactions per year on their platform. So think of the point of sale systems that you see at a convenience store, a mom and pop shop, uh, all the way up to the Verizons of the world and these big retailers. And so when you're dealing with that much data and that many customers, uh, they had no good way until Looker to be able to deliver data at a granular level. So what they built and what you see here is a data product that is completely custom, built on our APIs. And uh, it allows these unsavvy or non-data people, in some cases, merchants, to figure out what's going on with their business 
drill into transactions at the row level detail. So when you think of that scale and the number of customers that they're dealing with, uh, Booker was the only tool that could do this for them. So using APIs to build a product for your customers, creating greater engagement and reducing churn. So growth that way. And finally, I'll give you a few examples, but another point of sale system, Counta, is monetizing data. So they've, in a similar way, built an insights product to their, uh, their customers, their merchants. And what they've done, and you can go to the pricing page yourself, but they've taken all the rich functionality that Looker is uniquely able to provide, and they've chunked it out over four different tiers of plan. And they've done that strategically, so they're able to drive upgrades. And as a result, they're taking the data that they have, not only serving it up for their customers, but also uh, charging a premium for the extra level of service. And it's not just in uh, point of sale or fintech that we see this. We see this in sales B2B products. We see this in, uh, sorry, marketing B2B products, sales B2B products, operations B2B products, and even B2C. So uh, one of the customers here today, a company called Pixiv out of Japan, they are a fan art platform. And so they have uh, a bunch of artists who are creating these works of art, and they have, I think it's 30 million daily active users on their platform. So a ton of people looking at these artists' creations and liking them and, and figuring out exactly, uh, you know, saving on their favorites, that sort of thing. And so what Pixiv has done is for those artists, they've created insights and they're uh, delivering those insights again through a premium offering. And so it, the, the unique ability for Looker to work at that massive scale and deliver and productize these really great experiences for consumers uh, is, is pretty awesome and, and rare. So um, those are the three areas that uh, I'd like to introduce. And again, these are more sophisticated ways of doing things. So uh, if any of these seem intimidating right now, don't worry, John's gonna walk you through some very easy first steps to take. And uh, before we do that, I just on the topic of monetizing, I wanna say that these are some best practices we've seen across our customer base. And, uh, a lot of people really like this slide because it shows concretely how you can start monetizing with some of the features that Looker provides. And so, of course, historical data. If you want to pay for a year, if you want a year's worth of data, you're going to have to upgrade for that. Two years, you're going to have to upgrade. But you can also do granularity. And because Looker's able to provide that row and column level granularity, people are charging for that. Uh, you can do the same thing with the ability to self-serve explore and take action and alert. You can take, when you think about the actions themselves, you can say, well, if it's a very static endpoint, like a, a storage, you know, that's one level of offering. And if it's a little bit more sophisticated, like interactive Slack or something like that, you can charge for that too. Um, and then, again, if you want to give end users customization or more control, you can charge for that, and so on. So uh, there's a lot of different ways to do this. And in many ways, uh, you can think of this as uh, a spectrum. So there, there are very many quick ways that you can integrate and streamline workflows with very little skill required. Um, and then over time, as you get closer to where the revenue is happening and you require a more custom and, and uh, polished experience, there's all these tools that you might have heard about in the develop welcome session where we provide you the granularity of control uh, to, to make very custom experiences. And so with that, I'm going to hand it off to John. He's going to show you a quick walkthrough of uh, each of these different areas. Um, so this is kind of a fun demo for me uh, to do. It's because it's very rapidly going through um, uh, a number of different uh, capabilities. So nothing in depth, although if there's anything that stands out, you know, you'll want to follow up with the session on say the Action Hub or on embedding uh, and so on. You know, those, all those have been recorded. Um, so our three basic scenarios. First of all, just white labeled. So we're using the Looker instance itself. Uh, and we're using primarily a uh, configuration style thing, so you know, absolutely no coding required and showing how we get value from there. Uh, second, embedding, where we are starting to uh, build, build us into a web portal or something like that. Uh, so that's nice for a branded experience. You're starting to get into probably some web dev skills are going to be required by yourselves or by a partner. And then the full application development side of things, which is, of course, you know, the major investment for actual you know, uh, B2C type products like the global uh, payments example or, or large scale B2B uh, in that case. Um, so 
Uh, we'll run through those uh, one at a time. This fits into just integrating your insights, uh, productization, and monetization. So this is um, a white-labeled instance of uh, Looker. Uh, so white labeling is something that's used by people that are providing uh, Looker as a, as a product. So you might have seen uh, Essence uh, on the keynote stage yesterday. This is, they provide a number of data experiences with Looker, uh, and the white label instance is uh, one of them. You know, the values in the data, they're collecting data from various uh, advertising and media related sources, uh, the modeling that they do on top of that, semantic clear. Uh, and the reliability and consistency of the data is important. And this is one of the interfaces they provide to other um, companies in, in the larger WPP uh, group. So, you know, this is the very first place where we start uh, integrating uh, into other people's workflows. And incidentally, for those of you that aren't aware of it, there's a nice new feature so you can bring, build in your documentation links. So, you know, this is taking work that you've done in Looker and then providing it uh, out to other sources. But we're talking about productized workflows um, where uh, the data that you want, you want it where the people are. And so the simplest example, uh, uh, not insultingly simple though, because it's actually incredibly popular, is just getting uh, data into people's inboxes uh, just by scheduling it, just by generating a PDF or taking a, a spreadsheet and sending it into someone's uh, inbox. I know a lot of people do that already. Uh, a lot of people don't. And that's the starting point for it really is uh, so some really simple steps you can take to start uh, bringing data in. And you can still, from that email, follow the link and go into uh, the Looker instance. So in a case like um, uh, Essence, or we have lots of places where, uh, say, Deliveroo, they send out dashboards and reports to the restaurants that they partner with. And a restaurant manager is not interested in the self-service interface, so they just get the, the scheduled report. And that is valuable data for them, uh, uh, just in that sense. Um, and building on what we can do with a schedule. So in this system, I've got a couple of schedules uh, set up. One was uh, the PDF view. Uh, the other, difficult to make out, let's zoom in here a little bit. Um, high spending Facebook uh, uh, advertising set. So that's um, a spreadsheet that's been set up. It's been saved as a look inside of Looker. Uh, in the minor detail, you know, there's a filter against this. This is things over a certain value. So this is valuable information. Um, it's come into Looker. It's, it's, this uh, setup has come through the connection hub and through the marketplace. So getting to here has actually been a fairly simple process because of all the work that we've put in into the connections and the modeling. Uh, but then we want to get it to other places. And this is where we can start talking about all the different options that there are available for sending. So um, straight out of the box, like without doing anything, you will have email, uh, webhooks, um, storing to FTP. You know, so there's a few basic things. And then the rest of these icons have been uh, switched on in the admin panel. Uh, so if this data set was around uh, customer segmentation, for instance, you can use the uh, Action Hub to send that data set on. We just had a session on the main stage. So for example, if you're doing things around uh, customer subscriptions, people who are coming up to a renewal, people who have exhibited certain behaviors that you want to do a campaign around, we can send that off to Segment or to Marquito or do something with MailChimp, whatever it might be uh, about a mail campaign. Um, another really uh, useful example, just for getting started, is if you take um, a data set and store it in uh, any storage bucket, uh, Google, Azure, uh, AWS, they all have pub sub workflows or something like that. So actions can all automatically be taken, which is really nice from a, a look and maintenance standpoint because you know, you're not having to figure out how to build your own workflow systems. If you've gone cloud, if you have teams you can work with, um, they might be able to help you there. And we are just triggering it off with, you know, with that reliable data set. And another popular example, and I'm just going to use uh, email as the transport mechanism here, is I want to take this spreadsheet and I want to send it out to people, but I don't want it in their email inbox. I want it into some kind of target that isn't necessarily supported within uh, Looker itself. So if I was to send that off, that is going to uh, a special uh, email inbox. In my case, I'm using Gmail. Uh, I'm using a Zapier workflow here. Zapier can provide the um, inbox for you as well. Uh, in this case, we're using an external 
um, SaaS-based workflow system. Tray is another example. So Tray and Zapier we both use quite a lot. Um, we are just doing uh, a few basic things, you know, searching for emails that match certain criteria, and in this case, uploading it into a Google Drive and providing an archive of reports. Again, sounds really simple, but we have quite a lot of cases where the people who want this data do not want to log in, they don't want their email cluttered up, but they have some kind of process, in this case, just the personal drive where the archive reports are being, and that's where they are. That's where they already work, and we get the data to them uh, to where they want it to be. Yeah. So all these things are just really uh, flexible ways of getting started. We can associate uh, actions with uh, individual transaction level uh, detail things. So this is another example of Zapier. I've set things up with a webhook here on the Zapier side of things. You know, there's the, the webhook URL that it gets sent to. I'm using the Trello here for uh, maintaining uh, actions uh, and workflows. So we pick the board and the list and we send it to. Yeah, and it just shows up in our Trello board and we can take action from there. So there's a whole variety of these different uh, workflows that you can set up. And I meant to show you this tab. And these are the actions that, you know, that are available. I've enabled uh, only a few of them. There's plenty more. And you can also add in uh, your own, as we'll be talking about in the next step. Because let's take it up a gear. So those, all of those things were you know, really easy things to get set up fast and actually really popular. Um, like the CEO at GoCardless, one of our customers, is amazed that more of his employees don't use the scheduling facility. Because his favorite thing is getting useful information straight into his inbox uh, without having to figure out BI. Because you know, some people are very time constrained. They appreciate the value of data. Uh, but they want it to come to them where they work uh, instead of um, asking you to go to it. And that's where this embedding starts to come in. So this is uh, a simple web portal template. So the emphasis of today is how can you get started on these things quickly. Uh, this is something I built. We've got uh, quite a few different examples. This is just a day's work to build together a portal. And we're starting to show a really streamlined experience. Most of the technology is just Lucas dashboard technology. That's what most of the screen real estate is. You know, we've streamlined it with just a couple of dashboards uh, that we're showing. I've also got another dashboard that has a little custom viz built into this. So another little thing about the user experience. And we are really exploding with our capabilities here with the extensions to the Lurk interface. Uh, but custom viz as well. You don't need to be a particularly um, uh, deeply skilled JavaScript developer, a bit of JavaScript, a bit of HTML, and you can build a portal like this. Now, what will tend to happen in practice is it then gets developed, but within just a day or two, we do this in workshops and things all the time, you can start building a, a curated experience with just the dashboards you want to see or just the charts. You know, you can build in the rest of the website as, as you want to really communicate the message you're trying to, to get to and start to give uh, people that data experience that we're talking about. Um, one of the things you can do from a dashboard, this is getting into really into the technical governance, is I had an action there which is convert to PowerPoint. So if I were to press that button, and this is me kind of listening to the, uh, the network response of what gets sent, so for the, for the engineers and developers in the audience, what's happening when you send uh, an action, if you build your own uh, action hub, or custom action if you like, there's a payload that's coming out in a JSON format. Uh, there's the actual spreadsheet encoded there as well. So I've set something up that listens for that and extracts the name uh, and number of, of the dashboard. With that kind of information, I can start using the API call. So I'm showing this here with a little Jupyter webbook. Uh, really simple, you know, import the SDK, uh, give it some client cr credentials, make a call to that API, and we can download an image for you know, a particular uh, uh, report or tile or component on a dashboard. Or I can even build you know, a fresh query from start. That's absolutely tiny, so let's really zoom in on that. So you know, give it the data set you want, the view, the fields that you want to get. I've got some sorts. You could also add filters and all the rest of it. So really simple from a developer perspective. But if you look at what's happening behind the scenes, you know, that's being used to generate a SQL query, which incidentally I can extract uh, from here so I can see the SQL that's run. And in most organizations, the people that know how to make that call and process that data and turn it into a web page 
are completely different people to the people that know how to write that SQL query. And even if you've got both skill sets, even if you're multi-talented, the chances of you having responsibility for both of those things in your organization are small. So there's a familiarity with the, the systems that is also useful. So from a developer point of view, I can do a really simple API call. I don't have to understand the data model. I don't have to be someone skilled uh, in writing SQL, but I can get a data set coming back to me uh, in JSON, and I can build things with that. I can use, there's plenty of services out there. So SendGrid, if I'm wanting to turn things into email, I've got a SendGrid template I'm using, and all of this gets put together into uh, a custom action that I've written, which is give me a dashboard, you know, schedule that out on a regular basis. I'm going to use the API, uh, get the components of that dashboard, download the images I need, put those individually on a slide, provide a link back, so I'm sending information out, send data to people uh, where they are, send it in the format that they want to see. Maybe it's a Word document you want to make, but also provide a link back to the self-service, and you can build your own custom actions that way. And we have um, a few examples of that. For instance, uh, there's uh, one case which is around security. So they're generating uh, pager alerts in a, in a particular format. Um, and they use a custom action hub to do that. Uh, the way the action hub looks like on the system, so in addition to, by default, you will have a list of actions. If I scroll down, there is these, another set of duplicate actions. In other words, you can download our Action Hub. It's open source. It's a, a Node.js uh, application. It's written in TypeScript. You can add your own uh, action into that if you want. And what I've done, seeing as I'm not so much a JavaScript guy, I'm more of a Python guy, as a lot of data people are, I've built uh, an Action Hub with just a single action that's that got that conversion to PowerPoint. So you know, going up that scale, there's out-of-the-box actions. We've got quite a few of those. There's third-party workflow tools that are really useful, and you can build exactly what you need, if you like, via a custom action uh, hub. Then the final piece is, is building uh, productized apps based on this. So using, uh, say, the counter uh, example, they have two tiers of what they offer. So the basic tier might be something like this, where you have view-only access. We have a dashboard. We've used the theming so that the, the fonts and the color scheme are matching in with the corporate brand. We've built our own custom filters to drive the interactivity with this. And we've got a, a nice a kind of view only uh, view into our data. And then people who log in with premium access might get more functionality and we might get into uh, a query builder uh, side of things. And this is something that we've seen, for instance, at one of the, the big investment banks which is they built their own custom exploration interface. So they're largely reusing uh, what we've got from a data modeling perspective, but for the actual exploration of the data, they built something custom. Um, um, uh, another example we have here, uh, this uh, kind of focused on a finance example. This is by one of our partners, uh, Yeti. Has some similarities to the global payments. Um, you know, actual uh, customer example, in that there's a very simple report because um, they're really trying to streamline the experience, but there's a bit of flexibility. You know, they can add additional columns into what they're seeing, but most of the complexity of the model is being completely hidden. And what's happening here in, uh, in this uh, kind of demo example is we do have a workflow in the background. That data is being used to decide what offers should be made to customers with regards to loans. And then and against each one, we've got a little chart there, the blue highlighted line, bit difficult to make out. That is that individual's interest rate against the uh, distribution of interest rates being offered. That offer there is in pending status, and I think it was Clarence here has uh, an offer that's been accepted. In other words, everything, every pixel in this screen is not Looker. They've used their own visualization libraries. They've got a particular transactional flow that they're trying to do here. There's a particular business process. There's a specific product that this is related to. The value that Looker provides is govern reliable data. It's scalable access. That's why global payments use us, so they can have millions of customers using this. Um, and no one really wants to build a data analytics platform to get started. They use us for that. Uh, you know, buy, not build. 
but the customer experience thereafter, the specific nature of the, uh, the flow that they're going through the uh, application is something they care about a lot. So this is where people invest in you know, building a full product on top of the APIs.